reports coming from the Columbus Blue Jackets who their offseason has been a busy one losing players signing players trying to sign players the latest report out there from the athletics Aaron Ports line is that Zach Wierenski expected to sign his contract before training camp opens up in a couple of weeks. Speaking of Aaron Portsline of the Athletic, he joins us right now on FaceTime. Aaron, what uh, what makes the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, that confident that they think this deal can get done before camp opens? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things there. You, you look around the league, and there are prominent RFAs everywhere. So this is not just a Columbus and Wierenski issue. This is something across the league that the feeling is when one player, probably Mitch Marner in Toronto, when he comes off the board, if he when he agrees, I say when, not if, then the other ones will fall into place. Maybe with Wierenski, it's it's waiting on another defenseman across the league to to sign a contract. If nobody wants to take the first step forward and, and put themselves out there, they want somebody else to set the market, and then they feel more comfortable falling in line with that. I think further with the Blue Jackets, and Wierenski's agent, Pat Brisson, is the fact that this is still uh, amicable. This is still uh, a negotiation where there has been progress. Uh, it's not where they have been with previous RFAs in this situation. You think back to Ryan Johansson, uh, 2013. You think to Josh Anderson, 2017. Both players who missed all of training camp signed just before the season. I think in both of those cases, turf was already being staked out and hard lines had been drawn, and that's not the case right now uh, with the Blue Jackets and Marensky. All right, that's certainly good news. Um, what is the news like surrounding this team when it comes to their goaltending position? We know Sergei Brubovsky is no longer a member of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Is this team confident in what they have between the pipes with Corpus Allo right now? Yeah, well, they're confident with, with Corpus Allo and Merzlikens, Elvis Merzlikens, that between those two guys, or maybe with both of those guys, I put it that way as well, that they're going to get a capable, at least capable goaltending this year. Now, Corpus Allo has waited four years in Bobrovsky's shadow, knowing all along that even when he played really well, that the playing time really wasn't going to be there because Bobrovsky is a franchise goaltender. Now that Bobrovsky's out of the way, Corpus Allo is facing a, 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 a situation now where he can finally prove himself, where it's you've got the opportunity now to state your case as you've not had before. And the Blue Jackets hope he can do it. But as, as you guys all know, it's never just your turn in this league. You have to be good enough. And the Blue Jackets are really high on Elvis Merzlikens. Corpus Allos is gonna, he's gonna get a big push from Merzlikens, who's been a really dominant goalie in Europe now for four or five years in Switzerland, waiting for his opportunity in, NHL. He, in the NHL. He purposely waited and signed his contract so that he would arrive in the NHL when Bobrovsky uh, left, he feels like this is his job. And so it's going to be between he and Corpus Allo. But it could be a situation like the Islanders were last year, like Carolina was last year, where Columbus allows both of these guys to get comfortable and doesn't really turn it over to one guy unless that guy really grabs it and takes it. All right, another big loss, uh, along with Bobrovsky, was the bread man, Artemi Panarin. He signs with the New York Rangers on July 1. How do the Jackets plan to replace that type of production in their lineup? Yeah, well, I think the first name that, that should be mentioned here is the free agent that they signed, Gustav Nyquist. Now, he is not going to replace Panarin scoring, but he has the similar skill set such that maybe he's the fit in Panarin's old spot on that first line with Pierre-Luc Dubois, with Cam Atkinson, a pass-first type winger. Um, but it, uh, clearly, it's not going to be Gustav Nyquist by himself. It's going to have to be several other guys doing a little bit more and with this team the blue jackets way that they've built it they still feel like they've got a lot of young players who have more to give who have more room between the top of their heads and the ceiling josh anderson has been a real impact player they think there's more there as he continues to figure out his sort of space in this league oliver bjorkstrand's a player that started to come on last year they've got a couple of young players alexander texier uh, who, who looked really bright at times last year uh, coming in late in the season and they're high on Emil Bemstrom, a player that they drafted a couple of years ago, has dominated in, in Sweden last year. Um, they think he can be an impact player in the NHL. It's going to be several different players, though, 
no way one guy can can replicate what Artemi Panarin meant to this team. All right, quiet Thursday around the NHL, but the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets making one small move earlier. Uh, they signed Marco Dano. What are the expectations uh, in that signing? Yeah, well, I think he goes into that into the mix with some of the guys they just mentioned, the Texier. Bemstrom, Sonny Milano is a name we've been kicking around for years in Columbus. It seems like he's still around. He still is yet to really grab his place in the NHL. Dan is a guy that the Blue Jackets know very well. They drafted him in the first round in 2013, one of three first-round draft picks that year. He had a really bright 14-15 with them, a limited time, 35 games or so. I think he had 20-plus points. And then he was part of the trade to Chicago for Brandon Saad. They did not want to give up Marco Dano. Uh, but they had to to facilitate the uh, the Brandon Saad trade. And and Dano has sort of been a lost soul in those four years since he's been gone. He's bounced from Chicago to Winnipeg to Colorado, back to Winnipeg. He spent as much time in the minors as he has in the NHL. The Blue Jackets think there's something there. He's Even in this situation, though, with all the players that Columbus lost, he's still going to have to earn a spot here in Columbus. If you look at their projected lineup, there's no real clear spot for him. But there's a lot of potential with Marco Dano. He has he has shown it here before in limited time. The Blue Jackets hope he can show it again. All right, we'll see how it all plays out. It looks one way on paper. It looks a different way uh, on the ice, so to speak. Aaron, thanks so much. Enjoy your summer. Uh, look forward to catching up with you in a couple of weeks. Great. Thanks, guys.